I never want to speak bad about Atlanta because I think that even during its worst of times, it's better than most of the Housewives franchises. But they're really giving it all to Marlo this season. They really said this is your season, which is shocking considering how that whole reunion went down where I thought Marlo flopped at the reunion because she just didn't stand in it. She really like drove the I'm a victim and you should all be feeling bad for me point home. But then they would go to this package of her saying horrible things about the women and she'd be like, I was adopted. And you're like, no, no, what? That doesn't have to do with... So, but they're leaning all the way in to Marlo. They're giving Marlo like the dating scenes, like I want to find love is a full storyline for her. Um, And they're kind of really skirting over a lot of the stuff that she does that's not so great. Um, So I don't know what's going on. I don't know. But I don't, I still don't love this season. But like I said, it is better than most franchises on their good seasons. So if you are wondering where Kendrick is, it's with sorrow in my heart that I have to continue without him this week. Yep, it's true. Memphis had a horrible thunderstorm. Memphis is where, if you didn't know, Memphis is where Kendrick lives. And his Wi-Fi had been down since late Sunday night. So I said, okay, we'll just, he didn't have it Monday. We'll just record Tuesday. But they still hadn't restored it as of yesterday. Can you believe? So then I tried my best to get a guest. Actually, that's a lie. I just lied to you. I just lied. I didn't even try at all. I didn't ask one person. You want to know why? Because I'm chicken. I bet I could have found somebody who would have done it, but nope. I'm I'm too afraid to call or to text or DM someone to be like, can you do this like tonight or tomorrow? I really got to get over my fears because I'm sure I could have secured a few people. But it's tough too because Kendrick is so special and it's hard. I'm like, who else do I want to talk to about this besides Kendrick? It's tough. It's tough. But anywho, he's also not going to be here for the last episode of Martha's Vineyard. But he covers it on his podcast, Reality and Comics too. So if you're dying to hear his takes... Go over, check, go over there and check it out. I will still link uh, his episode, his podcast and stuff in the description. So we miss you, Kendrick. But on that note, let's, let's get into these recaps. <laughs> I'm so sad. Here at She Speaks Bravo, we believe that Bravo TV is a great form of self-care and therapy. I mean, look at me. I've been using it for over a decade and I'm a complete mess. I love that. I'm Emily. Every week I recap the latest episodes of your favorite Bravo shows, from Housewives to Vanderpump Rules. We need to get more cosmopolitan. Huffini! So if you're not already subscribed, get subscribed and hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode. The episode title, Roller Stakes and Blind Dates. Now you see, if you're watching Orange County, that is how you do a play on words and not putting things in parentheses, confusing the hell out of everybody. Because by the time they figure it out, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I get it. Roller stakes and blind dates. Allison, Drew's sister. Now, I don't remember, this was all unseen footage, right? I don't remember her sister. I mean, look, my memory's bad, but I, I, I don't recall them talking about her sister at any point prior to this, like Drew not mentioning or anything. But again, my memory is so horrible that it could have happened yesterday. And I'd be like, what? But she had a whole mental health break and had to stop. She'd been her manager, been Drew's manager this whole time, her whole career, but she had a full on mental health break around the start of COVID. And don't I understand that? Don't I? It was bad. I That was the darkest my depression ever got. I was unmedicated. I had not taken care of myself properly in a lot of years. And I get it. The COVID thing was real. But it turns out Ralph and Allison have not gotten along 
And Drew says she made some pretty serious accusations about him being controlling and manipulative. And were we not all as an audience like, um, that? Now, look, just because compared to what we've all said, like the fans have said it, it's been brought up at the reunions. Like this is not, these are not out of left field terms to use for Aral. And here she is like, these are some pretty serious accusations. These are serious. Or like, or just what we say literally all day, every day when we're watching Ralph on our screen. Like this motherfucker. Huh? He banned her from the house for a few years. Banned. And Ralph's like, you know what? I just may not be around all the time if she's going to be here. And Drew goes, you know what? Let's just pray. Let's just pray a lot. Okay. <laughs> sure. That'll fix it. With this situation, I don't think so. But we end up getting a really sweet, well, I wouldn't, look to, we'll get there because, you know, oh. Sheree talks with her business manager about She by Sheree. Now, if I were anyone working for She by Sheree specifically, I would actually be like, I refuse to film. I refuse to have my name up there <laughs> with the with the title Sheree's business manager. Mm -mm. Nope. I would that would be a secret job, like a down low job. Like I'd be like, I am I work for you don't know her. You don't know her. She's um she's she's I can't talk about it. Like that's what I would be saying. But she's upset, Sheree. She's so upset about the things Candy has said. And I am with Candy when it comes to this one. She's like, she needs to have a sense of humor about it. Like, it is funny. How do you not realize the humor in what has been she by Sheree? How do you not? You know? Like, it's funny that the site finally goes up and it crashes and by the way everybody who's seen a site crash there's no note they don't leave a note saying the site has crashed that's not a thing when sites crash it's just like it's you can't get on it like you're it's like it just won't even load so then you did have access to the back end because you were able to go in and put up a little note that's how you get into the back end Sheree she will use this term later but I'm with Candy. Sheree, you sat there with Marlo as Marlo said that Candy slept her way to the top. And Sheree's like, that's true. Yep. That, that's absolutely true. So how is, this is the thing with Sheree. She, she is an assassin when it comes to her confessional lines and all of the prepared reads that she can do. But she really cannot take any of it back. It's like she's, this is what makes Sheree funny though, is that she is truly that delusional that it at this point is like an innocence. There's an innocence to Sheree because it's like, you don't think it's funny? You don't? She's like, no, I really, I don't, th I think she genuinely doesn't understand why anyone has anything bad to say about it. And that is her charm, you know, why not? And they show this text exchange between the two of them and Candy reads hers in a voiceover. And I thought that was funny because that means that like, I just thought that was, that was cute editing. Cause then you have the text on the screen and I wish they would do this for all texts. So you show Sheree, Sheree reads hers and then Candy comes up and you hear, sure, I'm available all week. Just let me know. I wish all text exchanges had a voiceover from the authors of said text exchange. That would be so cute. Not possible because it's pretty shady when, typically it's shady when they show text messages, but. So, okay, Marlo gets a nice, gets another meeting with her. I don't really, I guess it was a charity that she works with and she has this meeting and I think it's, is this at her house? Because Sonia comes over and Sonia does what many, many a housewives have tried to do, and that is reason with a housewife when they've been out of line. And she's like, you know, it's just that you're great with me, but then when you go, when you get with the women, it's like you just go so low. And Marlo goes, okay, I agree with you, 
But I disagree with you. So you don't agree with her. See how that works? You don't, just take that out. It was like such a tact. She's learning these, tr- what she's, what Marlo's doing actually is she's learning buzzwords and tactics from therapists that, that make it seem like you're evolved, but like, but you're not. I agree with what you're saying, but I disagree. Okay. And she brings up, don't you remember Candy saying, fuck her flowers? Fuck her flowers? And it's like, that is just so hurtful to Marlo that Candy, two years ago, decided not to get the flowers. Just, that's it. It's just that. It's just that. She has no understanding. How come Candy can't give me a scene where she apologizes to me for not properly being there for the death of my nephew? Why? Well, I could think of a few reasons. Because if she does honor this accusation, it gives it merit. And it's so obvious what Marlo's doing that I understand Candy's I wouldn't even call it stubbornness. She's like, "Uh uh-uh, we're not acting like this is a thing. Uh Uh-uh, you're not getting this scene out of me. Forget it. But Marlo will use that, the fact that she's not getting a scene out of her, as a reason to stay a victim in this situation. Oh, yes. Did you you see what she said? Fuck her and those flowers. Sonia's like, "Uh, never mind. Okay, she and she no, actually that's not true. Sonia goes, okay, I see what you're saying. Ugh. No, you don't. Are you listening to what she's saying? I get that you're really trying to listen to what she's saying, but like, are you? It's so ridiculous. It is so ridiculous. In put in a situation in your mind in real life. Listen, I I do I have the bad habit of remembering. And not letting things go in my head. Like I will play it on a loop. Even though I'm like, no, I'm totally over it. The one benefit though to this is I don't have a good memory. So sometimes I genuinely do forget about things that happen. However, I know that I can hold, not a grudge. It's not like I, I just remember. But it still would be utterly insane. In this scenario with an equivalent experience in my life. Where like someone knew someone who died And maybe worked with them, maybe owned the restaurant that they worked in at one point. And then I was like, you know what? Two years ago when you comforted me in your home and related to me about your brother's passing, that wasn't enough, actually. Actually, that was not enough. I need you. You should have sent flowers. And what all Marlo thinks she is going to get is, I just simply said that. No, you screamed it at Drew because Drew wasn't getting it. Now, look, don't get me wrong. I know Drew can be real fucking annoying because she's incessant and like stubborn and like willfully, I wouldn't say ignorant, but ignorant. She'd be ignorant. But Marlo, this is such a reach. Let it go. But anyway, they move on from that, the topic of candy. And they go to Marlo going on a date. And they give this a whole moment, a whole big thing. So I'm like, God, they, they, they're they looking at Marlo as like the protagonist of this season. For those who don't know that, know that literary term, I know I sounded really smart. But that means like the one, the lead, the one that motivates the action. And that is a weird choice. A really weird choice. I, like... It'd be one thing if they were doing it and they were planning on giving her a a fair edit, but they're giving her a very favorable edit. So choices, you know, as Raven would, or I'm sorry, that's not Raven. What's her name? God damn it. From Drag Race. Ooh, I had to literally look that up. Tatiana, duh, the one who did the spoken word in All Stars 2. I love that performance. Uh, the, okay, wait, real quick. The Drag Race All Stars 2 talent show, I think that was the first episode, was so good. I watch All Stars season two frequently in the background because it's just talent, amazing talent. I love that cast. Okay, Candy and Sheree meet for their chat. Okay, Sheree, you sat there with Marlo 
talking about candy. And now you have the nerve to say you were talking negatively about my business. Candy was. Like, don't get me wrong. Candy wasn't saying anything favorable. But charade, the jokes write themselves. <laughs> it's hard. You know, it's hard. And I root for Sheree. I do. But I root for her knowing it's probably going to be a mess. But she'll be okay because she's like, what? I think it's great. She has found a way to turn that site, not being up when she said it would be up, into a fake positive. Because in her mind, she's like, I crashed it. That's right. All you people crashed it. Huh. Okay. Hmm. And she will say, we couldn't get into the back end. She says, we couldn't get into the back end. That was the problem. It's like, you did somehow because there's a note on the screen. The home page has been edited to say we can't, the site has crashed. That isn't a thing, okay? As someone who has built a website and knows what the back end looks like, uh uh-uh. It's not that fancy, by the way. The back end of a website, especially with like charades, that, that's on, you can do that on Shopify. Shout out Shopify. I think Shopify is amazing for online business owners, okay? Because you can build your own website or you can pay someone to do it because it it is a little tricky if you don't know what you're doing. But it's not something that like no one, it's logging in and changing things like you do anything and then you hit publish and then it's live. So someone got into a back end and put a note up that said the site's crashed. (laughs) Sheree. It's <laughs> so stupid. She's so stupid. Uh, but Candy is like, okay, yeah, the site crash. And Sheree's like, listen, let me explain. And they do a dip. This isn't the Dorit time lapse thing where they show someone talking too much. They do like a talking in circles edit where they're really shading Sheree and this was a Sunday. Wait, was it Sunday or Monday? Well, she went back and she tried to get it going. And it it, it has the tone of like, nobody's believing you. Nobody. And Sheree's one line is, you don't come to me for music advice. I don't come to you for fashion advice. This is not about fashion. Okay, this is about the fact that you said you've been working on She Buys Sheree Forever, barely got a fashion show up and running, and then none of the pieces from the fashion show were available to purchase. Okay? And Sheree, she lies. Sheree lies. She says that with fashion shows, no one drops the whole line at once. They do it in pieces. As someone who has never once attended a fashion show and then searched for those pieces later, I don't know if that's true or not. It just doesn't sound correct to me. It really doesn't. It doesn't sound like you didn't put one of the outfits up for sale not one not one candy argues that she's not the one who started all the narratives you know like the she by she in and not paying and sheree's like uh, uh, not she by she in, she by sheree honey meanwhile we've already found your outfits on sheen is it sheen or sheen i'll say sheen because that's what candy said but Sheree, this is fair. I got, I'll got. i give her this. She's like, well, what about all year with your bad reviews, not passing health inspection? Sorry, this isn't the part. But Candy goes, yeah, but then we went back and we passed. And then Sheree gets to say that she's like, I went in with 12 of my friends, got horrible service. We sat around for three hours, didn't get half the food. I didn't bring that up on camera, even though I am now. But it is a thing. It is true. She, they, she did keep that to herself. However, it's a it's still a little different. Candy does saturate herself kind of all over too by doing speak on it. Like it it's a smart move for her cuz it's just another revenue source from the YouTube ads. But she does talk about the show and it gives her more opportunities to be shady. Um Sheree could do the same thing and she does. She does when she does interviews and stuff and she's shady all the time, confessionals whatever. But then Sheree, she, so she had me there. She had me at, I went into your restaurant, had bad service, never said anything because I was being respectful of your business. But then she loses me. And she, and she goes, then I went to tags, your store tags, and the, the stuff was just not very good. And <laughs> Candy's like, okay, but 
I don't have a brand of clothes. Like we sell other people's clothes. Do you, do you not get it? She's like, well, still, it's in your store. It's in your store. Sheree, see, right when you think you get it, you lose it, you know? But Candy reminds her that she's the one. A bunch of them actually were the ones who said, just put a label on something and sell that. You will be making money so that you could then grow She by Sheree. But Sheree said, I would never do that. That is so Sheree too. She's too, I, I am way too good for that. I would never just put my, put my logo on something, which by the way, the logo is so hideous. Sorry, but it is. Uh, and, and, and just sell a bunch of stuff. Then she's like, and now that's what you're doing. Sheree doesn't really have an answer for that. She just kind of talks in some circles. And they go back and forth for a while. So Candy just apologizes for saying what she said on her public platform. She like, she basically says exactly what Sheree said. So Sheree's like, and then you go on your public platform and you say things about my business. So Candy is like, I am sorry for going on my public platform and saying things about your business. Okay? Because she's like, this is dumb. This is like, Sheree, how do you not? Know thyself. Shut up. That is so stupid. I love snacks. I often fill up on snacks and don't have room for dinner. Who am I kidding? I always have room for dinner. But I need nuts and olives and popcorn and delicious things like that at all times. And that is why nuts.com has me covered. Nuts.com is your one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruit, sweets, pantry staples like specialty flowers, and more. Their wide selection means there is something for literally everyone. And their nuts are notably different. I lived with my sister and brother-in-law, and they even stopped to ask me, like, where did, what's, where did you get this? I said, nuts.com. They said, these nuts are like notably better than any other nut I've ever tried. <laughs> but they don't just have nuts. The fact that they have specialty flowers makes sense, right? Nuts.com. It just, it puts it all in one place right in front of me. I got everything I need. They have plenty of gluten-free options, organic choices, and other really diet-friendly products. Whether you're looking for something sweet, savory, or you just want to stock up on everyday cooking essentials, you are bound to find something to try. You can shop a la carte anytime too, so you can opt into hassle-free auto deliveries so you never run out, or just pop in, grab a little, grab a little something. And if you're already stocked up at home, they also sell directly to businesses. Snack with satisfaction, knowing that quality is a top priority at nuts.com. They roast their nuts and pop their corn the same day it ships, so they reach you deliciously fresh. Since 1929, they've been doing it the old-fashioned way. One taste and you will know the difference. Right now, Nuts.com is offering new customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $29 or more at Nuts.com slash she speaks. So go check out all the delicious options at Nuts.com slash she speaks. You'll receive a free gift and free shipping when you spend $29 or more. That's nuts.com slash she speaks. Candy and Todd are now working on that movie of his. And for some reason, Todd thought about Drew playing the lead, but Candy does not want to play opposite of Drew. We're getting two, we have two like actory movie storylines going. We have the one on Orange County, which I am obsessed with. With Taylor being like, I got you a job in my Oklahoma movie. And Heather being like, oh my God, who is casting this? Because I am going to need to know if it's union, non-union, one of the reshoot dates. There's a whole list of things that you don't know about Taylor. And now we've got Candy being like, she's like, I'm not going to play opposite of Drew. I am better than that. And you know, are you? I don't know if you are. Anyway, Drew's house with her mom. They've got Chef Chastity preparing some food for Allison, but Allison isn't even getting there till midnight. And Drew's, but I thought it was sweet how Drew is preparing. She's like, I got all the oils that Allison needed. And I thought, oh. And so her mama is clearly like, we just, we love Allison. Please don't say a word. You could tell Allison is, is, is Drew's mama's like 
Allison is, it's tough for her. You know, mental health crises are tough. You know, I've scared my parents a few times. It says production wraps 1030, two hours later, Allison arrives and Ralph went to bed to not see her. And their daughter stayed awake, but she, he went to bed. He can't, he can't be in the same room as her. No. Okay. The roller skating. Okay. The shoot. (laughs) Drew cannot even roller skate, really. You only do these sorts of things if you are also like a badass roller skater, you know, or at least somewhat good. But she looks like she's about to fall. But Ralph first walks in and completely ignores Allison. Uh, and then later, it's nice that he... I, I wonder, though, it, it felt fake to me when he later goes up to Allison. It felt fake. It felt like he was like, cameras are on me. I may need to be a little bit nicer, so I'll do a little fake moment. I like, okay, I don't know if this is a hot take, but I like Drew's new confessional look with the black and white dress with the gloves and the bangs. It's a little funky, but I it is working for me. But again, we know me. I don't know fashion. I don't know style. I don't know anything. So who knows? But Drew's outfit for the shoot, even the skin, skinniest of skinnies look it, that is a tough cut that she got she gave herself a low cut um bikini bottom and a cropped jacket that cuts basically right at your pooch and that's hard man that is no that's that is tough to pull off so i just thought it was such an unflattering outfit because i'm like this chick's body is pretty damn hot right now why would you be like, let's focus all of it on the hardest part of a woman's body to tone up? Well, one of the hardest parts of a woman's body to tone up. You know, it's just like an unflattering, could have been, could have been still sexy and show some skin. It's just like, but that, ouch, that is not where I, I that's not what I would have done. But she doesn't care because Drew is Drew and Drew does her thing. Okay, I can't tell Drew she doesn't look good. Kenya calls it accurately, low budget Beyonce blow vibes. And I was like, that's what it is. (laughs) I couldn't figure out what it was. And when she said it, I was like, oh, yeah. (laughs) Damn, Kenya. You got her on that one, okay? You got her real good because that's exactly what it reminded me of. But finally, Drew, or I'm sorry, uh, Ralph talks to Allison. And this is, okay, this is why I think it's fake. He says, you know, it's just meant to be that you were here. And it makes Allison cry. And at one point, I swear this man kind of looks at the camera. Like, I swear he gives it a look like, did you catch that? It just, it's so, it doesn't, she, t- she loves it. Allison loves it. And Drew skates up. She's like, what happened? Oh, my God. But then she realizes it's a good thing. And then their mom cries, too, because she's happy to see her daughters back together. So it was a sweet, sweet moment for sure. I'm just not buying Ralph? Uh Uh-uh. Not at all. I don't buy it one bit. He's like, I'll never forget the crazy things she said about me. So insane to call me controlling and manipulative. Like, I've never heard that. You're the only one who's ever said that. Come on now. You would think after being on this show and getting all the fan feedback, he would be like, wow, I really need to look at this. But no, he's a narcissist. So absolutely not. Okay. Marlo's on her way to her date. And she calls Sonia on her way in and she goes, you didn't even call to check on me. Marlo, you need too much from people. You need way too much from people. That's not. It's like she didn't call to check on you because if you need her, you'll call her. Mm-mm. That, that, alo- that would have pissed me off. But Sonia just ignores it. And Sonia tells her about being at Drew's video shoot earlier. So Marlo's like, oh, I wasn't invited. I'm going to give her a call right now. I'm like, oh, okay. (laughs) Drew answers the phone. She's like, I'm shocked that you are calling me. And Marlo goes, I'm really nervous right now. I'm on my way to a blind date. And Drew's like, excuse me, um, Marlo, like, I need to understand where all of that energy came from. Marlo this honestly sums up Marlo in a nutshell to me. 
She's like, I didn't even know you were upset at me saying fuck you. You know, Florida must be rougher than Chicago. Okay. Like, you screamed in her face and were so intense that a producer knew, like, I better be here to make sure things don't go wrong. You know, acknowledge that. But instead of acknowledging it, all Marla will do is be like, this is where I'm coming from. Or this is where I was coming from. Okay, I was coming from this place. Like, got it. Okay, but like, fix it. You know? And I don't know exactly why this made Marlo hang up the phone, but Drew says, I don't like how you're showing up as a friend. And Marlo hangs up and goes on a rant about Drew's looks. You are built like a whole square, bitch. You are deranged wannabe actress. Because she says she didn't like how you're showing up as a friend. Like... You act, and by the way, instead of calling her to be like, are we cool? I just, I heard you had a video shoot and, you know, I just, I hate that I wasn't invited because we're not in a good place. But like, you know, I am sorry about screaming at you and taking it out on you. You didn't realize why I was upset. I shouldn't have done that. Then go into, I'm just so nervous. I'm going on this blind date. But she starts with that. And it's like, I'm not, I can't, the, excuse me. No, I need, you know. Marlo's date is in a strip mall, so not boating well. It's giving when Sheree went on that date with the um, doctor, not doctor, that guy. Except this guy owns this place, it turns out. But we get, this is what I'm saying with the producer, with them giving so much to Marlo. We get like a whole hype up for this date. Like this date is like 10, 15 minutes it felt like. It's a long time. A lot of airtime was used on this. And he brought her a dozen roses. So it's, it's, I think I'm happy that Marlo got it, but honestly, I could have got this in like a five minute max scene, you know, it felt like they were almost killing time with how long it went on. And there's a really funny confessional though, because Ty Yee, Marlo's friend is the one who hooked them up on the blind date. And there's this confessional where Marlo's in the chair and then Tai is just like next to her, not lit. And she's just answering questions. There's just like, why'd you pick this guy? She's like, well, I picked this guy out of, out of the, no, not any light on her, a hat. She's not done up. It's like, I'm pretty sure Marlo could just answer this, but it's cool. I like it. I like a little behind the scene, a little rawness, but he's 39 and Marlo's like, Ooh, that's young. And he has three sons, a two-year-old and a one-year-old included in those three sons. That is brand new. The one-year-old is like, oh, shit. So she was right to be like, are you still with the mom? Like, how did that happen? And then she says, are there any skeletons in your closet? And he admits that he'd been locked up a few times. And I'm like, okay, that actually is perfect for Marlo. Someone who is genuine. Well, I don't know about the rest of his personality, but he owns a restaurant. How about that? But, you know, he's got a job, a career, a, he's a business owner, and he was locked up before. So that makes sense that Taiyi was like, they'd be perfect, you know? But it went on and on and on. I'm like, okay, got it. Move it along. Next time, we are going to meet Kenya's man, Roy, and I cannot wait to see this dynamic. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to dissect the fuck out of it. Give it to me. Mommy Nation, which I forgot that was Sonya's business. Sonya Nation is hosting a brunch to help homeless moms, unhoused moms. But of course, Kenya is going to be super late. And Drew and her sister will have a nice talk, and I'm excited to see that. I love seeing these sorts of dynamics. Uh, I especially want to know if uh, Allison's going to be like, yeah, no, Ralph is still an absolutely controlling, manipulative asshole. I hope that happens. And then Sheree's going to have that dinner with all the OGs from Atlanta, which is interesting now that we know what's been going on with Kim Zolciak and her divorce. Did you guys see? I posted on my Instagram. Kim made a call to 911. 911 to say, my husband is threatening to file kidnapping charges because my girlfriend took our son to some place. And the 911 operator's like, okay, so what are you calling us for? And she's like, I just wanted you to know because he can he might get crazy. He has a tendency just to go crazy, get crazy. 
And then she's like, okay, look, I got to call you back. You know, my, I'll call you guys back. I got to go pick up my kid. <laughs> this is a 911. I'm like, call them back. This isn't, 911 is an emergency line, honey. You know she calls them all the time. You know she calls them all the time. Oh, my God. All the time. Anyway. Oh, that was so hard to do without Kendrick. I miss him. But on that note, <laughs> let's go into Martha's Vineyard. Shut up! That is so stupid! I know I am a broken record, but I don't care. Kitsch products are designed to prevent aging, damage, wrinkles, breakage. It's the ultimate preventative beauty regime. Whatever your budget is, whatever your skin type, your hair type, Kitsch is all about little indulgences at affordable prices, morning, noon, and night. They started in 2010 by selling hair ties door to door, literally just hustling. Kitsch is self-funded, female founded, and now they are carried in over 20,000 retail locations. We love it. The beauty essentials that I cannot live without will be the satin pillowcases. They also make caps and eye masks, and satin is vegan and cruelty-free. I did not realize that silk was not vegan because it came from silk worms. Oh my God, the heatless satin curling rollers. Say goodbye to heat damage. These are the original, the OG, and still the best heatless curlers. Do not settle for knockoffs. Get the ones that started the whole craze. Kitsch also has rice water shampoo bars. These help with overall hair growth and density. And then they have rosemary scalp oil. This is essential to support scalp health and hair strength from root to tip. I have a Kitsch hair tie in my hair right here. Don't ever use any other hair ties. It causes damage and breakage. I only have the pillowcases. That's all I use as pillowcases. You will never see a non-satin pillowcase on my bed. Because when I found out that when you sleep, you can cause wrinkles, I said, not anymore. Right now, Kitsch is offering you 30% off your entire order at mykitsch.com slash she speaks. That is right. 30% off anything and everything at mykitsch, spelled M-Y-K-I-T-S-C-H dot com slash she speaks. One more time, mykitsch.com slash she speaks for 30% off your entire order. The finale. We have just watched Silas and Jasmine fight, and obviously we are team Jasmine. And the next day, there's all this tension in the kitchen between them, and Jasmine leaves the kitchen, and Amir is like, hey, Silas, you guys cool? And Silas says to Amir, who has loved being in the kitchen, he's like, the last meal I ate was at 8 a.m. Amir is like, Huh? grow up. Silas, I think it's in his confessional. I think. Uh, maybe it was with the mirror. But either way, he says without any without any self-awareness that he doesn't like how Jasmine is more go with the flow than he is. Excuse me. I'm like, but you're on a vacation, dude. You would think that his epiphany and his realization would be, I need to loosen up. I need to lighten up on my wife. I need to loosen up. There's no routine. But it's like you you are very, very controlling. And it is actually a little I, – I am like genuinely freaked out for Jasmine because the amount of expectations put on her, I'm so glad we're watching her stand up to it, but it's really alarming. Red flags all around. I love Preston on his like back-to-back -back meetings, just making it happen. I love Preston so much. He works hard. He plays hard. Get it, King. Get it. They go on the uh, African-American Heritage Trail, and Milo is just the star. It's so hard. When there's a cute dog, it's so hard to pay attention to anything else. Milo was like, I am here. I want to learn. But the tour guide, she was born and raised there. She has two generations after her. She is ready to go. The, okay, she says this is where Diana Ross stayed when she was dating Gene Simmons. I was so glad people were like, what? 
What? What a weird pairing. I mean, I guess they're both rock and roll, but okay. And then she's like, you know the movie The Wedding? And everyone's like, no. She's like, what? Her Everything was kind of not landing. Like her her bits, the tour guides like bits, everyone was like, no idea. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. She's like, okay, okay. This usually kills, but okay. Alex is so nervous about this event that he is putting on. Uh, at one point, Jasmine, she is running around with like a, like a chicken with her head cut off, just doing everything, doing it all. And she's cooking Silas's fucking food. And Jasmine's like, if you could fin- help me finish cooking this, that would be great. And he's like, no problem. I just need to stir it up a little bit. And then Silas comes down. And he's like making himself food. He says, thank you to Amir. And Amir goes, oh, no, no, no. This was all Jasmine. I literally just like whisked it up at the end because she had to run out. And he's like, where did she have to go? Where where did she have to go? Then, then he calls her. He calls her and asks her where the iron is. And that motherfucker hadn't even really looked because he get, he go, he's on the phone. He's like, uh, where is it? I can't find it. And then it's right in front of him. So she's like, did you look? He's like, okay, here it is. Uh, so where did you look before you called? Because we know you're just calling to be mad at her. You're just calling to be mad at her. That's what you're doing. Just calling to be like, where are you? She says, I will be home in six minutes to steam your suit. So just leave it out for me. And he's like, okay. You know, like no help whatsoever and not even going to be like, not, not like he doesn't help and he's dumb, but it's, he demands, he's demanding this level of help. You, oh, oh, Jasmine gets home and he, Silas is acting like she wasn't supposed to go anywhere. And she's like, I saw that you had your food. And Silas goes, Amir isn't bringing me my food. Men don't bring each other food. And obviously he's got attitude and she's like, what's happening? He goes, well, it's definitely about you not being here to press my suit, babe. I'm not going to lie. It's definitely about that. Excuse- I thought you didn't want her to touch her stuff anymore because, you know, she ruined your pa- she ruined the pants with the iron, you know? Oh, my God. Jasmine, I feel I just felt for her. She's like, I found a way to get what I wanted to get done, but also have time to come back. And get everything else done to make sure you were fed while I was gone. To make sure someone was bringing the steamer in here. To me, I set myself up for right now. I could be steaming your clothes. And he's like, that didn't happen. She goes, what didn't happen? I'm done. You're almost done. Meaning like, she's like, I'm done. I could have been steaming your clothes. And he has the nerve to say, I'm almost done with no assistance from you. What? I blame Jasmine for allowing this dynamic. I don't know where she got this idea about what a marriage looks like. I hope it's not from her parents and their dynamic. But how did she even end up in a situation like this? You know, it's not like this. Maybe he's just loaded and I don't know. But he said, you need to get me dressed and ready for a party. That's your job. It's giving me Mark from Atlanta when he is mad at Kenya for not figuring out his entire fucking outfit for his event. Remember that? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Jasmine asks if there's anything else he needs her help with. And Silas goes, I just want acknowledgement. Fuck off. Oh, I hate this man. I like people start arriving for this party, like Alex's cousin or maybe Jason's cousin. Someone shows up and they're so early. They're just sitting around for hours. Like the part, like food isn't fully set up. Like, I don't know who gave them that time, but it was an incorrect time to arrive. So while everyone's getting ready, Jasmine goes and she confides in Jordan about Silas. And at one point someone says, uh, It's that Pisces energy. I think it was Jordan. That's that Pisces energy. And I'm like, hold on. Is Silas a Pisces? Because I'm a Pisces, but straight men, Pisces, are a dicey bunch. They can be dicey. They really can. Not all. That's a generalized statement. But 
the performance and Alex presents the surprise and it's it's just incredibly uncomfortable because you know that the surprise Alex has been so excited to give Nick is his girlfriend showing up and he's like all excited. And I just knew as soon as Nick turned around, he'd be like, oh, hey, you're there. And that's exactly what he did. It was, it was bad. It was uncomfortable. If I was that girl, I'd get out of this relationship. I hope by now they're broken up. I hope she's watched the show and been like, oh, okay, well, bye. Because what? They, they're also, the, the way they kiss and hug, he's almost like, he's like, okay, just a little bit, not, not too much. I don't want you to be too close. Still might consider, you know, saying I'm single if any of these women are interested. Same, so might just like push her out of the way and be like, oh, no, I, what girlfriend? That was the vibe. But Alex was like, I'm so excited. I hope Nick is excited. I'm like, that maybe I wonder if deep down this was a troll on Alex's part. I wonder if he was pretending. Because it's like, how unaware are you, Mr. I'm above it all and I'm so, I'm so enlightened? Because clearly Nick was not super pumped about the girlfriend. So maybe this actually was a troll on his part. Maybe he was like, oh, I'm inviting this girlfriend. If you're going you're gonna to lie about having a girlfriend, I don't. But it seemed like he knew her. I don't know. It's such a weirdest dynamic, weirdest reveal. Like, I don't think we've ever really had such a, like, secret relationship like this. But there are multiple performers. This is a whole thing. It looks so much fun. Uh, Things are done, though, and they're all just, like, chatting. And Simon pulls what felt very, like, Chris, what was his name? Um... Candace, Candace's man. Oh my God, what's his last name? But it felt, it, uh, Bassett, Bassett, right? Jesus, Chris Bassett, yes. Oh my God. my The names are escaping me today. But remember when on Potomac, Chris and some other guy like jumped into the pool from like a balcony? It's giving this when Simon, they're all just chatting and he's like, guys, it's time to party. And he jumps in the pool, fully clothed, watch on the works. And then he sits in the hot tub, fully clothed, drinking something. It's very much giving Chris Bassett, right? Yes, because her last name is Dillard. Let me, let me double check that. Hold on. Okay. It is Chris Bassett. I swear to God, that was crazy. Okay, so Bria goes in to talk to Tasia about how Nick has been flirting. Like, she's like, hey, so how are you having fun? Well, guess what? He's done X, Y, Z. A lot of things that should alarm Tasia. But Tasia goes, he's never given me a reason to feel like he would step out. Even this stuff? Does this stuff not count? (laughs) Okay. What is this? It's so crazy. It's just so, so bizarre. Okay, but then Jasmine and Silas talk outside. And Silas has the nerve to say, give me a little bit more. That's it. Iron my pants whenever I tell you to. Be by my side at my beck and call. Feed me multiple times a day because I can't possibly feed myself. And Jasmine, I wanted to hug her so bad. She goes, I'm hard enough on myself. I feel like you add to that. And he goes, if we treat our relationship as a necessity, a lot of our problems would be solved. (laughs) Oh, God. How romantic. How absolutely romantic. He doesn't give a fuck what she's saying about her feelings. Doesn't give a fuck what he's doing to her. Not even a little bit. Doesn't even consider it when she's talking. Nope. She starts saying how how she feels and he's like, okay, I, uh, but you didn't make my food. No, thank you. But Bria and like Alex, Preston, Simon, they see them talking. So they go over and they interrupt it, which was maybe smart because it would have fucked up the party. Jordan and Amir, they sit around the piano and they talk about how they're, well, okay. She talks about in her confessional how they're great friends. And Amir says he's in the friend zone. And when you watch this scene, it's so sad because he's looking at her with such a flirty, longing look and she's I wouldn't say she's not flirting but she's not overly flirting she's truly just sitting there playing the piano 
you know, I guess if you're that beautiful, like Jordan is, and a man like Amir is interested, you're like, eh. Because I'm telling you, if that was me, I'd be like, what time, where do you want to go right now? Bathroom? So it, it really, the chemistry is truly not there at all. Not at all. So my, my dream of seeing Jordan and Amir have sex under the covers is not going to happen. Oh, well. Bria, though, she walks down. She's got Milo in her hands. She goes up to Simon. They're all like dancing and having fun. And she goes, why are you not watching Milo? And he says, Bria, that is not an option. And she goes, hold up, 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 hold up. She says it so many times. I'm exaggerating, but she says over and over again. And she goes, outside, all right? You're bugging the fuck out. Chill out. Snap back into reality. Cut it out. I was like, oh, that's how you talk to him. And hes he just looks so drunk and like confused. She clearly hates when he drinks because she says it multiple. She said it a few times. Like, are you drunk? You're drunk on other nights too. But Summer walks out. Now, this was nosy as hell. I will admit that. She walks out and she's like, what's wrong, guys? What's wrong? And Bria's like, I asked him to watch the dog for two seconds. And he's like, "Uh, no, you did not ask me. You're just telling me, which is true, which is absolutely true. They both are like, he's disrespecting me. She's disrespecting me. It's all about disrespect. Lots of disrespect happening. This seems like a very toxic relationship, but I don't know. They end up resolving it the next day. So what do I know? Um, but Bria goes inside and she's like, I want him out of here. I want Simon out of this house. They leave the next day. I want him out of this house. He's fucking disgusting. No one even really reacts. They're like, what? And Summer, though, she stays out there to talk to Simon. How do we feel? Was this the wrong move? I, from where Summer was coming from I could tell she was like I'm just truly trying to like resolve the problem um but when Jordan goes up to be with Bria I think someone else might be in there with her no it might just be might just be Jordan um it it makes because I bet here's what I bet Bria knows deep down that she's a little wrong a lot of the time and she needs everyone to co-sign her bad behavior. That's why she like calls everyone, like calls her mom and waits for her mom to be like, no, you're totally justified. That's the vibe I'm getting. And that she's like, if Summer's down there, she can't be up here telling me that I'm totally right. And because deep down, I know I'm not. That's, that's what it is. Um, so she's, Summer's down there talking to Simon. Summer's down there talking to Simon. But then they all, they, this this house keeps it moving. They all have a great big dance moment. And Simon is dancing. Simon's like, fuck it. I am not, nothing will get in the way of this man's party. Even the girlfriend that invited him here and gave him access to said party. He's like, I don't care. And Bria tries, Bria tries talking to him and he's like, I don't want to. And so she's like, I'm going to go off. And she calls her mom. And then you hear her like, mom, stop laughing. This isn't funny. <laughs> Her mom's like, okay, like, oh. and she's like, is, is it, I'm, I'm being embarrassed. And then whatever her mom says, she's like, I am being myself. <laughs> her mom now twice has been like, this isn't, this isn't what you think it is. And she's like, okay, I'm not about getting what I want to hear out of you, mom. Simon comes in. We now realize to like get things to change into, because I think he's still in his wet clothes. And she's like, shut the fuck up. Let me talk to my fucking mom. She's like, psycho mad. And then Summer, she tries to come in because she hears Bria yelling. And she thinks she is going to be the peacemaker. I could tell that's what was happening. But Bria's like, get the fuck out of my fucking room. You're fake as fuck. Get out of my room. Get out of my room. And Summer's like, I stuck up for you. And I don't think stuck is the right word, but it might be. And Bria's like, you're down there talking with my man. And then I realized that there's a producer who is like monitoring the situation, which I thought like, oh, wow, damn. They knew it was that bad. Like, let's just make sure everything's okay. Summer, <laughs> she gets 
so frustrated with Bria that she pushes her and then Bria tries to go at her. At her, man. She's like a wild animal trying to get back at her. Jason is holding her back. Jordan is like, you're better than this. Stop it. What are you doing? Milo is barking all crazy. Oh, I wanted to go get Milo. Oh, that made me sad. Made me miss my dogs. But Simon, while all this is happening, he just grabbed his stuff, moved right past, uh, what's her name? Uh, Summer, standing in that doorway, knew there was going to be a fight, heard it because the whole house heard it, everybody. And he just goes down to that basement and falls right asleep, passes right out, sleeping like a baby. Multiple producers are now at the top of these stairs. Preston is there. Amir is there. The works. Sleeping downstairs. Not interested. Alex comforts Summer while Amir, Jordan, and Preston comfort Bria. And Bria is yelling. She, I am tired of people putting hands on me. You know, okay. I'm not going to take that away from her. I'm not. I'm not at all. And Summer was dead wrong for pushing her. It was such a weird, like, but you know, I get Bria was being bratty. And so sometimes someone's really frustrating, you know, they antagonize. Um, but I will not put the blame on her because Summer did push her. And then Bria wanted to respond. And then they thankfully were able to hold her back. But she, like we, you, you only see the, the camera that's like in Bria's room. You only get it from that footage. So you actually can't see, what Bria does right after, but you do see that she falls because I'm sure there was like something in the way. So you just see like her legs sticking out, like sticking out of the, like right outside of frame. So it was chaos. It was absolute chaos. But for some fucking reason, Silas tells Jasmine that she needs to do more than just text her friend. And Silas is like, do you want me to be honest or would you rather not hear from me right now? And Jasmine goes, I would rather not hear a damn thing from you right now. And Silas goes, first of all, long pause, you're not talking to your husband like that. And I'm like, ooh, this man was thinking a lot. He's like, there's cameras, got to be careful. And Jasmine's like, please, the way you've been talking to me this trip, stop it. Cut it out. I loved this. And Silas like, you flat out, you are flat out disrespecting me right now. And she just goes into the bathroom. But Silas follows her in and gets really loud and says, that coverage you get from a marriage, I promise you, your life will change tomorrow. What the hell does that mean? Huh? What does that mean? The next morning, Simon saunters up to Bria's room in his pajamas. He got it all the way in pajamas. Amir, though, she he leaves first, so he has to like wake a couple people up to give him kisses goodbye. But Bria and Simon, they let it go. She's like, okay, look, I'm sorry. And he's like, okay, I'm sorry too. And they're over it. What I'm also very grateful for is this. Summer comes correct. And Bria and Summer have a talk where they make up and summer acknowledges like I was just in your business and that's not cool. Like I had no business being there and I'm really sorry I pushed you. And Bria's like, it's all good. And they hug and they get over it. I love it. I love it. And then everyone gets to do their like final say as they sign the book, the, you know, guest book or whatever for the place. And the last to leave are Jasmine and Silas. And I wish we got a reunion. I'll tell you that much. This does not, I feel very unsatisfied that I don't get to see the dynamic now that they've watched the show. We've only got to see these Twitter things and so social media things here and there, but I'm like, mm -mm. I want Silas to watch a package of what he did and have to answer for it. Because I, it's very telling to see how, because he claims, he, I, someone uh, messaged this, someone commented this on YouTube. He claims that he reached out to Jasmine's father and apologized for how he spoke to Jasmine. That's great. Those are words. That's just a bunch of words. 
I want you in a reunion, watching a package of you being horrible, and then explaining it. Because if you think you're justified, Silas, which I think you do, I think you think you are justified. I think you're going to say something like this. What you have to understand is we had a routine. We got to know each other the pandemic. And so it was just two of us. But now that we're with other people, you know, I'm adjusting and it's not all about me. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're missing the point. You're missing it. You should never be demanding this much from her. And it feels like Jasmine is not this domesticated person. And now she's sort of been forced to be this like, I just take care of my husband and do the, and cook and stuff. She doesn't seem like she really even likes cooking, likes being in a kitchen. She's burning that breakfast sandwich in the strangest of ways. So it just, the pairing, it just, this is a, they are not compatible in my opinion. What do I fucking know? But I'm, I don't think Silas is going to change. I think it's only getting worse. And that's the scary part because I, I swear in a reunion, he would be like, he wouldn't say what we need him to say, which is I was wrong. I had to really look at myself and understand maybe my relationship with my mother or what I'm in therapy. It's what I need him to say. Like, I cannot believe that's who I am. I need to change that. No, he would be like, well, she didn't make a sandwich and I'm used to her making me a sandwich. What? Oh, I'm sorry. He doesn't like, he doesn't like starch. So, mm-mm. nope, we don't support that at all. He is only going to get worse, but I, we are robbed. It's really hard not getting a reunion with this show. There were so many moving parts and storylines and I wish they could talk about it. Like I need Nick to answer, like I need, I need Nick to watch the footage of him reacting to his girl coming in and being like, oh, she's here. I want him to, I want him to respond to that at the reunion, at a reunion. I want him to be like, uh-huh, I want. You know how they put the little they put their faces at the bottom of the screen when you're watching a clip. I want to see his face reacting and being like mm, like fake smiling. I want him to explain it. They need to get in the habit of just expecting and planning for reunions. I th- maybe the difference is like the first season. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I heard I think I this is what um the producers over on Reality Bites podcast said. I think what they said is Another network will essentially, or production company, not network, production company, they will just shoot the whole thing and they'll put up the money for it and whatever. And then Bravo picks it up, I think. Because I don't think this was originally, I believe that's what they said. This was not originally a summer house. Like it wasn't going to be a part of the franchise of summer house because it doesn't make any sense to be clear. Um, So maybe they don't do a reunion because they didn't, actually know the ca- I don't know it doesn't make any sense it doesn't make any damn sense maybe it has to do with the production company I don't know but if we don't get a season two we will riot give us oh my god give us southern charm new orleans and give us that oh my god give us summer house martha's vineyard give us southern charm new orleans and we'll shut up okay we will stop no that's not true we will complain we always complain And honestly, shout out to Bravo. I know Bravo is super problematic. All networks are like really problematic. Like when I, when I got into the challenge again, because I hadn't watched since it was like real world versus road rules and not called the challenge. I, um, didn't even realize how problematic MTV was until I started catching up and I was like, oh my God. They let these people back on the show because I guess in their mind, they're like, they don't represent MTV. They're just competing. They're not like role models because some people, some people on that show, I just, you think what they say on Bravo is problematic. You have no idea. So for a network, I think Bravo is actually not too bad. Disorganized as hell on that app. Whoever runs that app needs to be fired and replace with someone, or they need more people. I don't know what it is, but that app, the Bravo app is so freaking glitchy. And is anyone else having an issue where when you're watching the show on Bravo, the commercial break isn't, isn't input correctly. So like you'll get almost the end of the scene and then it'll go to commercial. And then when you come back from commercial, it picks up at that tail end of that scene that went 
right before. Do you know what I'm, if anyone else understands me? Leave a comment if you're watching on YouTube. If you're one of my Patreon people, comment below. Um, because it's like, it, who, how have they not gotten the message over there, Bravo? You and I now that I know how to put like ad breaks in podcasts. I'm sure it's a little different for global television. But it's like you just need to move the marker over like half an inch or half a half a second because it's like you're just not quite getting the commercial <laughs> break properly. It's a mess. But still, I'm saying Bravo for a lot of networks is not as problematic as others. And I know it gets confusing because they do a lot of problematic things, but other networks are worse. Like when I watch other reality shows, I'm like, wait, what? They let this happen? Still, and they do. They let it happen. So shout out to Bravo for being not the worst. Huh? How about that? Ugh. All right. This was so sad without Kendrick. But I had to give you guys something, you know? Otherwise, we'd be getting this on like a Friday. Uh, by the way, I am going to start covering Project Runway. I love Project Runway. I haven't really been uh what's the word I'm looking for like an avid private project runway watcher in terms of like I had to get every single episode every season throughout the years I fell off for a few um but I always loved the show always loved it and I decided I would like a refresh so I went back and I've been watching all of it on Peacock Oh my God, it's such a journey. It's so great when you can have this like focused drama. Like it's focused on talent execution and not just, but you get a little workroom drama, of course, and stuff like that. But it's, the show's fantastic. I, Tim Gunn is a national treasure. I will get into my thoughts and feels on Tim Gunn versus Christian when I, when I cover Project Runway. But you can expect Project Runway episodes. I'll also touch on Dancing Queens as well. Dancing Queens is so good. I did not give it a chance uh, soon enough, I let like six episodes go by and I was like, I need to catch up. And it is super enjoyable, really fun. Does not feel like a Bravo show. Clearly it was done by another network first or another production or some. I think, I think again, Re Reality Bites podcast, I believe they said um, it was a TLC show and that it has that feel. And then they put in like some Bravo-fied things to round it out a little bit more but I could see how it easily could have transitioned to a TLC show in a heartbeat but anyway I'll get to that when I cover Dancing Queens and Project Runway run away okay love you guys mean it and I'll see you next time bye I hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you did, would you mind leaving me a five-star rating and review on whatever platform you are listening? If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget there is the super thanks option down at the bottom, the little button with the dollar sign and the heart. And also I'm on buymeacoffee.com slash she speaks bravo if you want to buy me a little coffee or two or five. And my Patreon, that is where I'm covering all of the classic Bravo jams. If you want to follow me over there and subscribe, link is in the description. And follow me on Instagram and TikTok at She Speaks Bravo. And whoever the guest was for today, all their information is always in the episode description. So if you want to follow them and check them out, check there for the info. And any of the sponsor codes that I mentioned in this episode will also be in the description. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.